Hello and welcome to part 6 of using Sugarbytes Obscurium inside your DAW. In the first videos we've already made a nice intro uh, RP sound, we've moved all of our kick and snare and bass over to the 32 bar loops to give it a bit of progression, and in the last video we made a riser sound which is here, let's have a listen to it. And everything kind of drops at that first drop, which is great. But what we did talk about was making a faller sound as well. So the riser kind of leads into the new progression or the new phrase, and we need a faller sound that kind of announces that it's arrived. It's like, it's here, yay. So usually a crash symbol is what you'd, um, well, what most people use for that. Um, white noise is good. Something that goes down instead of up, something like that. So we're going to try and make something like that today. Um, I'm going to go right ahead and create a new MIDI track, and I'm going to call this faller. And as usual, I'm going to copy across this MIDI clip down here because um, we're just using one long continuous note. And let's double click Obscurium, open it up, get rid of the default preset, choose the init preset. And of course, it's just going to sound like this. So I thought with this one, because we want kind of a hit or like a crash or a single sound, let's turn off all the motion trigger buttons apart from the first one. So we just have one hit at the very start. I'm going to bring my ARP amp envelope up to the ARP envelope. So we have one note. And let's give it maximum reverb and just maximum reverb for now. Very good. So bring the pitch down for all those notes because we want it to play a G. Bring the poly down because we don't want to get into chords. Bring the ARP down so it makes sure we pick the G out of the chord that we choose. And the chord that we choose is the minor chord that we've been working with the whole, whole tune. So, one sound there. Very good. Um, so, let's try and make this as noisy as we possibly can. Um, using the noise, obviously, which is a good one. So let's bring that up. But we also need to create some noise. So what, what I might do here is let's make it all FM synthesis again. Because we can use the FM stuff and the, and the routing and the ratios to try and get a really grimy sound. If we bring the pitch all the way down. We get something like that. So what I'm going to do is bring the filter type up to about halfway between a low pass and a band pass. And if we bring the cutoff maybe down here, maybe bring the type up more so we don't get so much sub. Give it a bit of a release. So you can kind of hear how that FM synth oscillator pitch down really low is kind of creating Mmm, glitch kind of a glitchy sound that sounds a bit more like noise than an actual synth. So that's a good starting ground. We could give it lots of chorus. It's not gonna do too much to it. Let's play with the routings. Let's bring the ratio up. Maybe let's stick with this routing. And let's play with the FM values, so... So up there it's quite a high sound. And down here it's quite low. So what we could do is, uh, let's bring it down to the lowest value, open up those four extra options, give it an envelope. Let's go into our mods. Let's make the release really long. See what happens if we give the envelope to FM1 and FM2. This is kind of how we made the kick as well. Except we're using the filter to really get rid of any frequencies here. What if we used our pen tool and brought the filter down, the cutoff filter down? Maybe if we brought the type down, it's going to introduce quite a lot of low end into it, but... I'm kind of drawing in my own little envelope here to see if I can just get a little bit of that sub at the end. Now let's, um, what else could we do here? Maybe 
If we change the amp envelope to a MIDI envelope, well that's quite crazy. Um, <laughs> it's alright, we can work with that. The more we have, the more, more hectic it sounds, the more we can subtract from it. So we can shape this. I think we can shape this. Um, let's give it, oh, let's give it heaps of poly. So it's going to play lots of notes. And it's very loud. Um, let's bring the cutoff. Bring the filter type up to a high pass filter after those two notes and bring the cutoff up as high as it goes as well and bring the noise down so we just have the reverb doing all the tail let's bring the pitch up and see what happens oh, nice chord I just love this machine. <laughs> I kind of like that. We could even get rid of the noise on the first beat, I think. No, that yeah. up's not going to do anything. Well that is totally not why, what I intended to make in this video, but I'm actually kind of liking that, so I'm going to keep working with it. I just want to listen quite quickly with the riser into the faller to see if they actually complement each other, and then we need to sort out some levels. I think this is too loud, it's dominating quite a lot. We go into the faller and maybe give it some delay because that's kind of a nice paddy that's kind of like a deep housey pad that uh could sound quite nice if it was delayed i think let me just go back to that faller bring the delay time shorter Make it really short. It's playing with the filter type here. We could probably bring the poly down to, say, three notes. Let's try a different chord. It's a nice one. I'm going to play with the FM1. I'm trying to make it just a little bit less harsh. Bring the envelope down. Maybe the envelope down a little bit on the FMX. So that chorus is giving it that weird kind of, uh, mm, it's almost like a, a, a very quick LFO on the pitch, which I think I like, but I'm not too sure. Maybe, maybe about halfway would be good. Now we can bring the volume up a bit. And it, maybe if we change the mix so that it moves away from the FM oscillator down into the analog oscillator on that long tail. No. <laughs> Worth a try. Let's try moving that FM. Are we on FM2? Hmm. What happens if we bring that down? Okay, that sounds good, so I'm going to keep it up there. And then I'm going to bring it down. Give it a little bit of an envelope. I'm down like this.
and have the filter cutoff come down as well. Because it's already set on, on a... It's getting to a low pass filter, so we can kind of start cutting off all the high end frequencies with this filter. We don't need an envelope for this. You're just adding some motion trigger points in here because I'm interested to see what that'd sound like. Changing the chord on that new motion trigger point that we just added. Maybe have the poly down for that one. I like that quite a lot. And I'm going to go over to my bass track um, and I'm going to steal the compressor that we used for side chaining. So remember the compressor is side chained to the kick, which is compressing the bass every time the kick plays. So it gets out of the way, ducks out of the way, so there's no interference. But if we duplicate the compressor over across to the faller, keep the same settings, it should get out of the way so the pad should duck out of the kick as well. It should give it a pumping feeling, I think. Now we can bring the volume up a bit more. bring that across here as well. This guy, which is the Riser 2, I'm just going to open up a bit and uh, let's listen to it quickly. Remember we made this in the last video as a kind of a secondary riser thing, which I kind of like, so I saved. I'm going to bring the FM minimum amount up, the FMX minimum amount. And bring the ratio back down. And bring the volume right down so it's quite subtle. What we could do here with this um, faller sound, it's more a chord now. Let's call it chord faller. So we can see in the MIDI clip that, let me just make the grid smaller. This is where that extra trigger marker point that I put in is. So let's bring that across and let's make this an octave up. Let's try it. Let's make it all an octave low. That's cool. But the last thing I want to do here is this threshold, which controls how much compression happens when that kick plays. Um, it'd be nice to have that not all the way down on the first kick of this first drop phrase because the we want to kind of announce the chord. So maybe if we bring, you'll see as I move the threshold, we have a line that corresponds to it in our uh, arrangement view sequencer here. I'm sure your other DAWs will have this as well. So I'm just going to have the threshold up then quickly come down. So we should just have a chord and then the compressor will kick in. Let's just bring the cutoff envelope up for that bass line. Okay, let's listen to the riser and the faller. I still feel like we need some kind of noise there, so I'm very quickly just going to make a MIDI track called Noise, load up another Obscurium. Let's just 
Uh, again, go to the init patch. I'm going to take out all those notes like I did before. Uh, pitch down, doesn't really matter because we're going to bring the pitch down to negative 24. Use a high pass filter completely. Bring the, the cutoffs good there. Uh, make sure we have a note. Make it really short. Give it lots of reverb. I love reverb. And we can play with the noise. Let's have a line tool, our ruler tool, and have the noise coming down. Start at the highest value and go down like this. Uh, it's not continuing along the sequencer because I did make this very short, so let's actually drag this out again. And we should get rid of this note, make it two bars, as uh, a bar long. Very good, and what I'll also do is copy that compressor across to the noise as well, which is doing the side chaining. Maybe it's cut off a little bit too much, I think. So let's go into our cutoff and bring it down a bit. And I'm happy with that. What we should do is group these together and call this a four. So we've created two obscuriums, one to do a nice lush chord, one to do some white noise, and that should be it. Noise is too loud. What's going on with that noise here? Hang on. That's cool. So playing with this particular routing algorithm on the FM and bringing the ratio up kind of creates more noise for us in a way. What if we bring the filter type down to low pass and have this coming down? Maybe lots of resonance? No. No, let's stick to what we had. High pass filter. And of course, we need to make sure that cutoff doesn't go all the way down low so we don't get too much of that FM oscillator in. What if we put an envelope on the pitch and make the envelope a very long release? Okay, I'm gonna stop there because this video is going on. Very good, I'm gonna leave it there. We will continue the progression in the next video. I'll make it even a bit longer so we can start adding something in like maybe some rhythmical chords. We'll start playing with the chord feature, uh, maybe a bit of arpeggiated stuff and uh, we'll get into things like using um, the uh, warping, um, sorry, uh, the um, morphing area, morphing area, and other interesting, more advanced features of Obscurium. So thanks for watching, my name's Tom Cosm. Mm -hmm.